Today I want to push the limits of 3D printing and see if it's possible to actually 3D print the perfect spread of Nutella. Initially developed for space travel to provide astronauts with nutritious meals, 3D food printing has been rapidly evolving. So today I'm going to be trying the most popular 3D prints and see if they work made out of chocolate. Then I'm gonna be seeing if it actually works to put Nutella in the 3D printer. One of the hardest things about 3D printing with chocolate is the type of chocolate itself. It has to be soft enough to be extruded, but then hard and fast enough to support the next layers that go on top of it. Supposedly, Cocoa Press has perfected the chocolate made specifically for 3D printing. So their chocolate comes in these rods. You load it in like this and it melts the chocolate at 33 degrees Celsius. So it's a really low melting point. The bed isn't even heated. And put it up in here. So first let's try the most popular 3D print of all time, Benchy. If you aren't into 3D printing, Benchy's like the equivalent of Hello World in programming. All right, let's look at the time lapse of this. It's starting out great. The layers look smooth as can be. Who needs PLA when you have chocolate? It's getting a little sloppy. Benchy might be a challenge for chocolate and it's not looking so good. Uh-oh. Oh no, what happened? It's just a mess of chocolate now. Okay, so this Benchy really struggled. So I think the main reason is because normally there's an overhang on the roof here and so with the chocolate, it's just not stiff enough to support that overhang so it just collapsed. Okay, now let's try the second most popular 3D print of all time on Thingiverse, this whistle here. Look at that, that's actually looking really good. Even on the parts that had some pretty good overhang, it's doing okay. Okay, it's done. That actually worked surprisingly well. It actually supported it pretty well. Let's see if it actually makes a sound now. Nope, no sound. But you can't eat it. So you can see it does have the cavities where it's supposed to. So I'm not quite sure why it wasn't making the sound. Now before I see if we can gain a little bit of extra happiness from chocolate, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video that works even better than chocolate, BetterHelp. These last few years have been difficult for everyone, and one of the most important things you can do in times like this is to focus on your mental health. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via messaging, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist anytime and schedule a live session when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for you for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge as well. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who's custom picked for you, more scheduling flexibility at a more affordable price. So get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash action lab, or you can click the link in the description. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to our experiment. Now let's try something that's articulated. I don't think it's gonna work very well since the chocolate doesn't quite harden as fast as PLA. Also, the nozzle's much bigger than you'd print with PLA. It's like 0.8 millimeters, I think. So you can't get as fine of detail. Okay, the articulated octopus actually looked like it turned out pretty well. Let's try to take it off and see if it can actually bend any of its uh, legs here, or arms, or whatever they are. Okay, it lost a few of its arms, but it actually can bend a little bit. Yeah, the problem is the layer height is too big, so it doesn't have enough resolution to get these links right. And also the links are really weak because they're made out of chocolate instead of plastic. But you can see that some of them did actually work. But once again, the best thing about it is you can still eat it. I want to see if I can actually use it to make perfect designs on a piece of bread. I'll try it with the chocolate first and then we'll try it with Nutella. So to do this, I have to change the Z offset to be exactly the thickness of the bread. And then once it zeroes, then I stick the bread on there so that it's printing right on the surface of the bread. Okay, so first we're going to test if this is even possible by just doing a little smiley face on the bread. Perfectly spread chocolate on the bread here. 
Okay, that worked, but let's see if the bread is uniform enough to print a pattern across the whole surface that has words. Look at that. <laughs> the perfect spread of chocolate on bread. Okay, now for the real test. Let's see if I can get a perfectly uniform spread of Nutella that uniformly covers the entire piece of bread. Okay, it's Nutella time. Knew this was gonna get messy. Oh, here it comes. Now that I have the Nutella loaded in, the challenge is getting it perfectly on top of the bread in the right spot. So even with machine cut bread that you buy at the store, the loaves aren't exactly the same each time and they're a little bit different shapes and they're a little bit different thicknesses. So in order to print the spread right on top of it in the right place, what I did is I took a picture of the bread and then I turned it into a vector and then I turned the vector into an STL format. So it's basically just a flat image that I made have a certain thickness. So this thickness is gonna be the thickness of the Nutella. So right now I'll just try it four layers thick. Now I have the 3D file of the Nutella, but I don't know exactly where it's gonna print on the bed. So in order to figure out where it's gonna print, first I'll zero it at its normal location right above the plate. It'll start printing the Nutella pattern right on the plate. And then I'll re-zero it exactly the thickness of the bread. So I'll stick the bread underneath and zero it according to the thickness of the bread. And I'll leave that Nutella pattern so I know exactly where to place the piece of bread. It's working. <laughs> The perfect spread. After hours and hours of trial and error, we have it, the perfect spread of Nutella. Look at that perfect thickness, exactly matching the pattern of the bread itself, as if the Nutella gods themselves had spread the Nutella on this piece of bread. So if you had your own chocolate 3D printer, what would you try to print next? Let me know in the comments section. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing. It helps out my channel and it also lets you know when my latest videos come out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.